Hi, welcome to this short tutorial video. The whole exercise of this video is to demonstrate how to model an interdigital capacitor with respect to an ideal capacitor we have in ADS 2011 or the same process can be used for earlier versions of ADS as well. To start with, I have the simple test bench where I placed an ideal capacitor and mentioned the value such as 0.1 picofarad mounted by two terminations on either side from S parameter library. Later, we include a two terminal interdigital capacitor, which we have to find out the dimensions so that it produces a capacitance equivalent of 0.1 picofarad. This, the other capacitor is also terminated into 50 ohm impedance on either side. In order to find out the geometry values in order to produce capacitance of 0.1 picofarad, we have wrote a very simple formulas to start with so that we can optimize these parameters in order to match the performance. Using the measurement equations from S parameter library template, we wrote a simple equations for S11 difference which is equal to magnitude of S11 that means the reflection coefficient caused by the ideal capacitor element minus the magnitude of S33 which is corresponding to the input terminal of interdigital capacitors. Similarly, we have wrote another equations for S21, S12 and S22 that can be seen here. We set up an S parameter simulator depending upon the frequency range in which we have to model the capacitor performance. And then using the optimization templates, we place the four goals for S11 difference, S21, S12 and S22. Each goal is defined as equal to zero. And please note we have not entered anything in the frequency band because we want the characteristics to be matched over the entire simulation frequency range. However, if designers want to do modeling in a certain specific frequency band, they can always mention freak as the independent variable by clicking on this edit button and adding a variable called freak. And then from here, they can define the min and max where they want to do this modeling. We set an optimization controller and choose the optimization type as gradient and maximum iteration as 2500. Now once the optimization process is begin, we need to set what parameters we need to optimize. So in this case, using simulate simulation variable setup icon and we go to optimization tab, I have set these four values of interdigital capacitor to be optimizable starting from the width of the finger gap gap between the finger and the interconnection line and the length of this capacitor now this design is already optimized so these are not the original values which we have obtained when we place this capacitor onto the schematic from library now after optimization we found that these values are suiting to make a 0.1 picofarad of capacitor now if we run a normal simulation, we can observe the quality of the graphs representing characteristics of the ideal lumped capacitor and the microstrip interdigital capacitor. So let me try to fit this screen in the video so that you can see all four graphs almost overlapping on each other exhibiting that interdigital capacitor is operating 0.5, sorry, 0.1 picofarad as we desired in this case. Now if user wants to optimize this design to obtain any other capacitance, they need to modify the capacitance value which they desire and run optimization by clicking on this button. By clicking on this button, it will re-optimize these W, G, G, E and L value to produce those certain capacitance. However, care must be taken to accurately define the dielectric over which this printed interdigital capacitor has to be modeled. So in this case, we have chosen 1.6 mm height FR4 dielectric with ER of 0.4.6, the metal thickness as 35 micron or 0.035 mm, and a loss tangent of 0.0023. As you would imagine, the capacitance value which largely get affected 
based on the dielectric which is used for implementation. So this concludes the part one of the video. Let's talk about how can we create custom footprints in ADS and then associate it with a particular component which doesn't have any footprint information. To begin the footprint generation for any component, it's very important that we read the data sheet to see what manufacturers has recommended. Sometimes manufacturers will directly recommend the footprint uh, which designers need to use for their layout purpose or sometimes manufacturers will only give the device dimension as can be seen here. Now this example is for a BJT from Avago Technologies up with part number 842070. In this document we can see they specify their device dimension where the center body of the device is around 1.78 mm. The collector and the base leads having the width of 0.5 mm and the emitter, two emitter leads having the width of 1 mm. Now based on this requirement we can create a layout footprint uh, for this particular component so that once we generate the layout from a schematic the appropriate footprint gets generated. In order to make the footprint, let's open a new layout in the ADS window. The only care uh, which needs to be taken while footprint creation is ideally the footprint should center around the origin so that once we move around the things it serves as a reference location. The origin of ADS can be read using these coordinate numbers here or usually it is denoted with slightly bigger plus sign in the layout grid. So if I place my cursor here, you can read the first coordinate reads as 0, 0. So these are absolute X and Y coordinates which reads as 0, 0. In order to begin the layout footprint creation, uh, based on the device dimension in this case, we can use these polygons, polylines, rectangle or circle kind of drawing utilities in order to make our desired footprint. Now in order to begin that let's switch on a coordinate entry by going to insert coordinate entry so that we can point to a specific coordinate where we want to begin our designs from. So let's keep it to 0, 0 to start with and we click on apply and now let's pick a drawing tool so we can pick a rectangle in this case and by clicking the rectangle you can see a crosshair with X and Y location. So currently I am working in the units of millimeters but designers based on their workspace creation in ADS 2011 they can choose the right unit but usually it is not recommended to mix and match the units as you would like. Now in our case let's start from 00, 0 by clicking on apply you can see there's one anchor which gets fixed at 00, 0 and the another corner is free movement along with my mouse. Now I can either enter, uh, I can go to the desired coordinate and click at that point or I can enter my another coordinate. So let's say 2, 2 because the device dimension is around 1.8 mm. So by over specking a little bit this will allow our gate or the base and the collector to be little outside um, you know the, the metal boundary so that undesiredly they don't touch the ground. Now in order to make uh, the base and the collector terminals having the width of you know 0.5 mm approximately on either side we can start at the center of this point and go a little wider than this line on the plus y axis and little wider than that on a minus y axis. So essentially if the base uh, width or the collector lead width is around 0.5 mm. We can choose something around 0.6 or 0.7 mm depending upon the quality assurance recommendation uh, in the specific process. Now to make it easier we can read the coordinates. Obviously the center is at 1 in terms of y axis and x is equal to 2 mm um, and then we can begin our design from this point. Now in order to select appropriate coordinates, we can select 1.35, uh, sorry, x to be 2 
and y we can start from 1.35 click on apply and depending upon what length uh, we need uh, for this case let's take a mounting dimension of 1 mm so that we need to go to x of 3 and y to be minus 0.35 from 1 so that would be 0.65 in terms of y and we click on apply and we get our mounting lead for the collector pin the same thing we can do on this side so that we start with x equal to 0 that's the starting point of this edge and then we can keep minus 0.65 uh, oh sorry plus 0.65 and click on apply so that we get this pin here and then we can enter x equal to minus 1 and y equal to 1.35 so that we get the lead or the mounting position for the base lead remember these BJTs or FETs have a pretty long uh, base emitter and all these terminals but they can be cut as per the mounting convenience uh, we don't do I know very big footprint just because the device leads are very big we can cut it and mount it as per our own convenience now apart from this uh, base and collector we need to have two leads for the emitter portions in order to make the emitter portion which is sitting at x equal to 1 and y equal to 2 and y equal to 0 respectively we can start our emitter leads from that dimension so for emitter because emitter in the device is 1 mm width we will start at x equal to 1 and we can enter the y value depending upon whether we want to make the top lead first or the bottom lead first so we can enter y equal to 0 so that takes us to the center point now we need to offset our x a little bit on this side depending upon how wide we would like to have the dimension so for 1 mm let's try to keep it uh, keep the width of this footprint as 1.5 that means from here I need to bring my cursor down to 0.75 location so 1 minus 75 will give me x equal to 0.25 and we can begin from there so y equal to 2 which takes me to this position say apply and from here we can continue to 1 0.5 so x is equal to 1 and 1.75 sorry 1.75 and y again 1 mm height so let's go to 3 and say apply so this gives me the top emitter lead the same uh, process can be obtained from here so we start from 1.75 y equal to 0 click on apply and go up to 0.25 in this direction so we go to 0.25 and then y equal to minus 1 to have 1 mm uh, lead length and click on apply and we have the border lead as well now with the current layout as we can see there is a center portion which is drawn in corn but it is shorting the ground and the base and collector pins what we can do is to reduce a little bit by stretching this corner so that we can create some clearance between uh, the, the collector and the base pin as compared to um, you know uh, the ground plane or the emitter which usually will be grounded so here the assumption we are taking that this emitter will be used in grounded condition right now once the footprint is created we can continue to add the pins which will be used for connection purpose uh, when we do a schematic design so when we insert a pin the pin number has to be oriented depending upon the pin number in the schematic symbol such as 1 2 3 usually for a BJT one number is denoting the base two number denoting the collector and three number denoting the emitter for FET one number usually denotes the gate two number denotes the drain and three number denotes the source so in this case uh, we can switch off the grid snap and we can switch on the midpoint snap so that we can place the pins 
at the center point so that connections appropriately can be made so here we can connect it automatically snaps to the midpoint so that's pin number one pin number two can be placed here and then pin number three are placed here usually the BJT or a FET nonlinear model symbol will only have three ports so we don't necessarily need to connect anything on this side if connected this will appear as a pinless entry and sometimes simulations or a layout generation may give a warning or an error message so we can ignore uh, connecting the pins there just focus on these three pins later when we make a layout we can do the ground pouring and connect this whole thing to a ground so essentially our footprint for the BJT or the FET whatever component we are making is ready so we can save this layout if additionally needed we can even create the ground pattern here by manually making a rectangle and putting the via hole in a specific layer now it's very important to note that we are using the con layer for our drawing so users can change the layer from here or they can change the entry layer or the drawing layer by clicking on the appropriate layers uh, on this layer selection window mostly uh, we use the con layer for our footprint generation if you need to add a text or you want to enter some pin information we can always use a silk screen layer in order to type in any text or any information which is required for our footprint so in this case we are satisfied with this so let's pick along with this and we can save it now the question remains how to associate this whole footprint along with the layout additional thing which you, your designer can do is select this whole thing and move click on move command and we can place this pin number one reference onto the origin of zero zero by moving which you can see is moving freehand because it's not snapped to the grid or we can enter insert coordinate entry and let's enter zero zero and click apply so that the pin moves to zero zero location as can be seen here so once we are done let's save this design and we are ready to associate it with any component in the schematic so let's close this layout and open a new schematic cell in ADS and let's call it as a BJT test and from the library um, let's pick from devices nonlinear library uh, we can pick a BJT let's say an NPN model and now we need to attach that footprint along with this model and that can be simply done by right clicking on that component go to component and say edit component artwork in the component artwork we can choose the artwork type as fixed because default it doesn't have any artwork we can choose the artwork type as fixed and then browse to the design name which we just created so here we just created a layout with the name BJT footprint and is the layout view which we want to associate click OK and the artwork name appears here and we can click OK now if we add some test transmission lines here just to check whether the layout is appearing OK we can go to T lines microstrip and let's pick an emblem to be connected at input Hemlink to be connected at collector and emitter respectively so let's have a look how this appears and we can connect a ground at emitter at this point now in order to generate the layout from a schematic provided all components have the footprints associated with it we can simply go to option called layout generate update layout and click OK on this pop-up window now we can see our footprint is correctly generated so we have TL2, TL1 and TL3 component as we needed. Right. So this ends this tutorial video hopefully it gives you enough information on how to work around in ADS using all these options. Thanks for watching this video.